help me understand, I guess, your approach or USMR's approach to kind of fund management, not having capital sitting stagnant for long periods of time as you are handling the portfolio management side of it? Yeah, good question. The holding cost of paying your investors isn't really a concern for you, but First off, in your private placement memorandum, you can have an activation of the capital. So you don't necessarily have to start paying the return until you deploy it. But then you still have the same problem when those loans pay off or you sell them or whatever happens that funds, those funds are back on your books until you're able to redeploy. And so that being said, for starters, just, you know, FDIC insured high yield savings account. I mean, you can earn like four and a half percent. Maybe that's a little aggressive. Four percent plus is what I've seen. Four point one five percent from like some of the online banks. But you really want to have your pipeline full. That that's really what I can speak to is having that constant prospecting for more deal flow, because that's what I've seen in any real estate business, like wholesalers, they get excited about having a couple irons on the fire, and then they stop sending mailers and making cold calls. And then when those deals close, it's like they didn't have the pipeline continually just replenished. That's the best advice I can give there is talking to more sellers, teeing up the next deals, and then otherwise having high yield approach to not letting that cash just sit there at 0%. So having been a fund manager for 50 years now. Your question is very right that what happens to the cash when it's sitting idle. But on the flip side, what happens if there is a great opportunity that is giving you, let's say, 18% return, but because you wanted to invest cash and not leave it at 5%, you invested it at 12%. So now you're missing out for the next two years at 6%. It is not, it is neither an art nor a sign. It's more like a gut feeling or an intuition. And you, over the period of time, you get a knack for doing what's right for the fund. And then you need to have some buffer between what you're making and what you're paying the investors. And that buffer actually protects you from these kinds of things. The next thing I did is that I had about 20, 25 million dollars in my fund. So what we did is that we approached the bank early on and we took a $500,000 line of credit. It didn't cost us anything except a quarter percentage point to, to get the line and $300 a year to renew it. That line slowed and gradually increased to $5 million. So now I deployed 100% of my cash and maybe one or two million dollars of that money, which at the time it was three or four percent. So what happened is that the minute you get paid, your first thing goes into the line of credit. So the returns were always higher and I didn't have to worry about keeping any idle cash. So that's how I managed it. Nobody is talking about the revolution happening in real estate where regular investors can earn great profits while helping homeowners that the banks have failed. Join the movement and start your journey into note investing at fixnotes.com.